So there's this book called Hope Leslie. It was written by Catherine Maria Sedgwick in 1827 and received critical acclaim from famous figures of the time like Nathaniel Hawthorne and William Cullen Bryant. Critics of the day put Sedgwick on par with writers like Washington Irving, James Fenimore Cooper, and Harriet Beecher Stowe. Okay, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that you never even heard of her before. And if she was so great, why don't we read her books alongside Rip and Winkle or Uncle Tom's Cabin? And why aren't there any movies made of her work? Well, to help you out, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the plot, and if you're still skeptical, hey, at least you're well informed. Okay, so there's this pretty little girl. Her name, as the title might suggest, is Hope Leslie. But sad story here. Her parents died, and she and her little sister Faith are sent from their home in England to the American colonies to live with her dead mother's best friend, Mr. Fletcher. After the girls arrive in 16th century Boston, little sister Faith and her attendants go ahead to the frontier house in Massachusetts before Hope and her entourage can make it. Hope sticks around Boston for a while with Mr. Fletcher. He likes her because she reminds him of her dead mother. Anyway, when Hope and Mr. Fletcher finally make it out of Boston, they arrive at the Fletcher house just in time to witness the carnage and aftermath of an Indian attack. Fletcher's entire family has been slaughtered, except for his oldest son, Everill, who has been kidnapped. And Hope's little sister, Faith, has been kidnapped, too. So Everill and little sister Faith are with the Peacock Indians, and they want to kill Everill because they're pissed off that the white people have taken their land and murdered half their tribe. But in a mock Pocahontas maneuver, the chief's daughter, Mago, Mago, uh, Mag uh, chief's daughter saves Everill's head from being tomahawk chopped off by bum-rushing the execution. So instead of a headless Everill, we now have a one-armed chief's daughter. Everill escapes and goes back to England. Why? No one knows. But little sister Faith? She's still a Peacock captive. So, Hope Leslie's childhood is filled with longing for little sister Faith, as well as with letters back and forth from England with dear Everill Fletcher. Eventually, Mr. Fletcher sends Hope Leslie to live with some Puritans in Boston. Well, not just any Puritans. Governor Winthrop and his crew. She's supposed to learn how to be a real lady, and apparently the Puritans have a monopoly on that. So while Hope's in Boston, she becomes best friends with Miss Downing, a reserved, proper puritanical girl. In the meantime, this evil creep Sir Philip Gardner tries to mack on Hope. Even though he's like 20 years older than her and is secretly sleeping with his servant boy, who is actually a 15-year-old girl that he stole from a convent. <laughs> real upstanding gentleman. In the meantime, Everill comes back from England. There were obviously feelings between Everill and Hope, but we also find out that Miss Downing had a raging crush on Everill back in England and hasn't completely gotten over it. It wasn't reciprocated though, so great news for Hope. In the meantime, Mago, Chief's daughter, finds Hope and tells her that little sister Faith has married an Indian, but will come see her in a few months, as long as Hope promises not to get anyone else involved. Hope reluctantly agrees, but doesn't realize that the evil Philip Gardner found out about her little deal while he was spying on her, and is devising a plot to use this information against her so that she has no choice but to marry him. And? Well, that's all you're getting from me. So does Hope ever get to see little sister Faith again? Does Philip Gardner's evil scheme work? Will Hope and Everill ever get the chance to express their true feelings and live happily ever after together? <laughs> well, you'll have to read the book to find out. Oh, and then I mentioned that there are Native American battles, witch trials, a band of drunken, orgy-bent sailors trying to seize Hope, and massive explosions! Yeah, that's Hope Leslie for ya. A lot different than the normal overly emo seduction novels and self-aggrandizing, inflated prose from the rest of the era. So, in all your spare time as a college student, give the book a shot. Hey, what's the worst that can happen?